everyone good evening how we are doing good evening lagos good evening nigeria good evening to all our friends all over the world we have some very amazing friends that watch us all the time from us from london from argentina dr ebenezer from argentina Ronke from us and from Folakem. it's been a while we've heard from Folakem. Folakem, how are you doing good to have everyone online and all the friends of dr Olufemi Olaleye that is watching right now. We give you all shout outs. Good evening. Thank you for joining us online. We appreciate you guys. We have an amazing guest in the studio this evening. I've heard so much about you and I've listened to you for years. May you so rest in peace, Charles B, when you always, um, you know, having a very, very intensive discussion with Charles on radio way back then on Inspiration FM. It was always a moment I look forward to listening to you and to get enlightened and insight into the medical profession. Thank you so much, sir, for honoring my invitation. Thank you, doctor. It's great and amazing to have you on the show. Welcome, welcome, sir. Thank welcome. you, thank you, thank welcome. you. Thank you for having me, Ronke. And well thank done you. for the fantastic work you're doing through your platform. God will thank continue you, to bless and honor you as you do. Thanks for having Amen. me. Amen. Good evening, Amen. everyone out there. Good evening, thanks for having me and welcome to the show. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> it's going to be interesting. Thank you, doctor. Thank you. So share with us, doctor. People have heard so much about you. You know, everybody knows doctors by Optima Care Foundation, Optima Care, you know, Medical Center and all that. Mm -hmm. Who is Dr. Olaleye? Okay. Dr. Femi Olaleye is um, the medical director of Optima Cancer Care Foundation, um, a foundation that established uh, back in 20. 2012, uh, basically to meet the needs of people in Nigeria who don't have access to cancer screening. Cancer mm -hmm. screening services should be a public health um, service. It should be actually be a pillar of preventive community health care. Uh, and it should be one of the things that should be offered through our integrated primary health care systems. But due to some failure of governance, uh, we have not done this. So um, it was formed out of that need. And uh, I'm here living my dreams. Uh, it's something I've wanted to do. Uh, I left my training, my work in England uh, to come back to Nigeria to do this. And I give God the glory that on I a night you. like this, yeah, on an evening like this, uh, you can't, uh, you've counted me worthy uh, to be a special guest on your show. So I can, one, inspire. Hopefully, mm, yes. motivate, and yes. lastly, be encouraged because it's not easy. Me continue. myself, I need to be encouraged to continue, yes, and I continue. look forward to yes, I look yes. forward to a session yes. with you like this. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you. So, share with us your background. Is this what yes. you've always wanted to do? Is messing what you've always or daddy or mommy, you know, pushed you? Everybody wants a doctor's son. Everybody wants a lawyer son or an engineer daughter and all that. Was it just you or you got encouragement or motivation? Um, I think it's, um, it's a combination of both. Um, okay. I, I was inspired by the stories my mom told me that when I was a little child, I generally just like, I had a curious mind. So I always wanted to find out how things work. And when I was old enough to start catching grasshoppers, lizards, I started doing operations on them. And, wow. and I, I was not faced with blood. I'm always interested in wanting to find out how things work. So uh, and my mom used to tell me a story about when she had me in a womb, pregnant, a, a pastor had told her, that I was going to be a doctor and I was going to be a oh. famous doctor. So from that, such an early age, my mom had always been uh, calling herself my mad doctor, my mad doctor. So oh. you can imagine the joy of my graduation as a doctor. Uh, still anyway, alive. She's still very much alive in, uh, in Lagos here with me. And she's always very proud to tell people the story of how, despite all what she had to go through in life as a widow, because she lost, uh, she became a widow at 36. My father died uh, very early. We need to give, uh, I don't we know need whether to give, you're still there. Yes, 
Yeah. We need I'm still here. I'm still here. Okay. The, that's why you just fluctuating. We need to give okay. we need to give a big shout out to mommy for her faith, yes. you know, yes. in being yes. God's word and you know, trusting the servant of God that much to start yes. believing in yourself that I am mommy doctor. That's amazing. Yes, yes. That's she, amazing. She, she 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 went through a tough time uh, of being a widow and raising all myself and my siblings by herself as a single wow. mother. And so what kept her faith was like you reminded us now, the word of the man of God that, you know, my destiny is a good one and she should do everything she needs to do to preserve that. And she did. Uh, she made sure I completed medical school. My father died my first year in medical school. Oh, so, so sorry. He didn't, he, yeah, so so he didn't, he didn't, he, amen. He didn't live long enough to see me graduate as a doctor, but he, he saw me, you know, matriculating. Uh, as a doctor, so being the first child, mm. uh, a son, there's always what we call uh, an expectation to be successful. Yeah, responsibility. Uh, and I thank God that I, God allowed me, gave me the grace to expectation. That expectation mm. um, continued now to motivate me, which is why I say it's a two-way thing. Yes. To whom much is given, much is expected. Okay. So, so when when I was growing up, I had an expectation of me that I'm going to be a doctor. Fortunately for me, the Lord ordered my steps to a point where I was able to study medicine, mm -hmm. and um, the rest is history, as they say. Congrats, so it's a combination of two great. factors. I had a mom yeah. and a, a set of parents. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. I'm sure mommy, mommy, mommy is mom, mommy's more than proud. Yeah, she's more, she's more than proud right now. And we pray that she will eat the fruit of her labor in Jesus' she's name. She's a proud uh, grandma. Yes, yeah, so that's, yeah, that's yeah, I'm saying. You, you know, many times the, the joy of grandparents <laughs> is not the joy of children. The joy is in their children's children. Seeing yeah. that children's children is their joy. Absolutely. And as far as she gets to this stage, Absolutely. she will still see more. Mommy will still be a great grandma Amen. by God's grace. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Grace Amen. Grace. Amen. Amen. Thank you very I much. always appreciate when parents understand a vision and they support the child all the way, regardless of the choice of that child. And that's that's amazing mm -hmm. to know. Well done, sir. Amen. So that child, tell you child you of, you're growing up. So were you just a good boy all the way? You're just a good boy. You didn't you just, didn't just, 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 just a minute. Just a minute. Yeah. Okay. And you wanted something. And uh, come around and get it. Oh you can go around like that. Let me increase the lights. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. The remote control to the IS so that I can get brightness. Um, I'm obviously I'm doing this at home, so there will be a little bit of uh, distraction. Well, no, well, I guess I guess uh, you can understand that. Okay. This is a, this I is think, the fun part of our show. We yeah. like the that's why it's a light show. It's not yeah, it's not pretty. Is that, is that your ma is that, that madam? Yes, madam. You want to say hello to us? Say hello to us. Yes. Oh, yeah, like say hello to us. <laughs> I've been able to sustain this great man. Hello, she's so pretty. Hello, man. Thank you. Don't run. Don't run. Don't run. Don't run. Hello, Siri. <laughs> hello, How are you? Ah, that is, that, that is your yeah. couple. You look so much like hey, you. Hey, hey, hey. In a cup of coffee, they didn't do that. <laughs> so much, I like so much. Oh, that's amazing, <clears throat> Melissa. God bless you. Thank you. Sorry about, sorry, about, sorry about that. Oh, Amen. No, no, no. I, I allow it on the show. It's a live show, okay. and so the two are the one thing we enjoy. On, because I'm sure that if I had invited the whole family, it might not have been possible. So I just get, I get that extras. You know, when the Thank interview is done, those are the extras that we get. God bless your home, sir. God bless your Thank home. You. Share with Thank us. You. Were you Thank a good you. boy all the way? Were you just a good boy, obeying mommy, no stress? Um, <laughs> that's a big question. Uh, I did not okay. care. <laughs> you remember my name is Femi. You know what they say about Femi? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <True>. <laughs> you when I was... <laughs> can imagine when I was a little boy. Uh, Yes, I lived up to that name. Let's let's do it that way. I lived up to my name. No worries, say no more, sir. I understand more than you've said. Say no more. <laughs> That's amazing. So when did when did Olu Femi now turn to a day Femi? When did it turn? When did it when did name now turn? Well was it after medical school? 
Uh, well, I don't know what the turn is. Never turn. I'm still Femi. I'm still a, okay. I'm still the child of God. I'm still Ulua Femi. That means God loves me. Yes. I'm still, I'm still basically uh, alive and well to fulfill the destiny the Lord has committed to my hands. That's, that, okay? that's amazing. That's well, amazing. Go on, go on, make go on. That's, that's amazing. What yeah. I was even trying to say is that, you know, um, after medical school and all that, you, you, when, when you, all your friends, were they just medical students all along? You didn't have friends that could distract you, you know. But I know that medical students always face a challenge. They, when they have other friends that don't understand the challenge in medicine, they just, they don't, they don't, we study four or five years and you guys have to go all the way to seven to house, you know, housemanship and service here and all that. And you guys feel like old students. And when you guys talk, you talk above our heads, you know, and everybody's like, what's wrong with this medical student? You know, sometimes and you guys still want to enjoy the fun others are enjoying. And sometimes you can't afford, you know, to do that. Did, did you have those kind of friends around you, those kind of influence? Oh, yes. I would consider myself a very balanced uh, student when I was in university. I, I didn't miss my social life, and I, 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 and I recommend everybody to do that. I wasn't a typical medical student, let's put it that way. Okay. It was so bad that some of my friends didn't even know I studied medicine. And when they find out that I was uh, qualifying to be a doctor, and we had all been rocking parties, <laughs> traveling out of campus and all of that. Uh, most of them used to joke that they would never trust me to be a doctor, to be their doctor. But I thank God that uh, uh, I was one of very few people who managed to combine the social activities as expected of undergraduates um, and allow the university system to go through me rather than mm -hmm. just going through the university. Um, and I went to the greatest university. That allowed it. Mm. Yes, so greatest of the greatest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, great effect. I joined. I joined uh, school because it was a dream school for me as well. But life happened, okay. and you know, I, uh, I couldn't get in. But I always have a, always have a special place in my heart. Great effect. Oh, great. Great. <laughs> <laughs> so well, because I went to that great university, he yeah. was. It was a leveler in the sense that everybody, I mean, I had friends outside medical school and um, and I really had a good fun time uh, focusing on what is important, uh, important in, yeah. as a young man growing up, knowing the reason why uh, uh, I went to school, I went to university. And of course, remembering my mother always saying, which is always, uh, which is always what our important. mothers. Yes, avoid friends, avoid women, avoid too much fun, focus on your education, which is what you would expect from your parents at such uh, uh, situation. So I thank God that uh, I was able to go through university uh, with so, a balanced view. Yeah, so so let's say, let's say you were lucky, you were able um, to balance it, you still... And you still add fun, but what do you, what would you say to the younger generation now? Because they even have lots of more, you know, they have loads of distractions. Do Absolutely. you think it can still work? It can still work for them to still have it balanced, have fun, social life, and for those that want to go into medicine, do you think they can still they will still be able to balance it the way you do, with the with the whole lot of distractions that they have right now? I genuinely believe that um, studying and educational systems right now are not as probably like the way when we were in school. Uh, I think they have a better way of learning. Uh, mm -hmm. During our own time, there was no Google. Yes. There was no internet. Uh, you had to physically go to the library to find books to read for anything. Um, so they, they are, their learning curve is different from us. But I hear what you say about distraction. But there was always distraction during our own time too. It was mm -hmm. probably, you know, not to hand. There was a lot of things people who didn't want to focus. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a test to, of their ability to focus. True. So and being focused is not lack of distraction. Being mm -hmm. focused is being paying attention despite distractions. So we yes. had distractions too. So, for example, my kids, and that's why my son is troubling me now. He wants to play with my, uh, with my device so he can go and play a game. All right. So, 
we didn't have such things, but we also yeah. had other things. We we had, we had other things that could distract us there. So yes. um, so I would just say to medical students or anybody planning to study medicine, despite the distractions out there, focus. Because uh, mm -hmm. once you finish your life, your study, your student life, and you come out to the real world, you still have to focus. There will True. always be distraction out there. Yeah. And you still yes. have to find a balance. And basically mm -hmm. just be successful at what you have committed your hands to doing. And, and that's my yeah. general advice to anybody out there. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So share, okay. share with us, you were, you were in UK for a very long time. You worked for over, almost over 10 years. You know, and you just mm -hmm. one day you just woke up and said you wanted to come home, you know, and establish, you know, in a country that you know that a lot of challenges, you, you were in a better environment, so to speak, mm -hmm. you know, as far as, you know, the, the basics are in place and all that. And you have to leave that comfort zone to come to a place that you have to start from the scratch. Start, starting from the scratch is not even the only thing. You have to put everything in place by yourself. You know, you have to struggle to make it work. What gave you that inspiration for you to leave a comfort place, to come home and start from the scratch? Thank you. Um, people have asked this question and uh, many times, and I always, again, give God the glory for choosing me to be of relevance to my generation. You see, the Lord put a burden on my heart. Um, very early on in my stay in the UK. Because by the time I ended, I got to the UK, I had my mom, I remember I told you, became a yes. widow at 36. So yes. we there were three boys and three girls, our children, mm. my siblings. So I had two brothers and, and three, three sisters. sisters. So by the time I ended up in the UK, I lost a brother. So my mm. second or third year in the UK, I lost the second brother. Wow. Yeah, so I was the only so son related, remaining of my mother, yes. And, and they were all both due to poor healthcare situation. Uh, so by the time I became a clinical fellow in obstetrics and gynecology and I was settling down, I could have continued to become, to settle down and be at the top of my game as a gynecologist in England. That's when the Lord started putting a burden on my heart that it didn't spare my life it didn't make me successful within such a short time of arriving in england i got very good rotation very good jobs while some of my colleagues were still struggling some were still doing security media jobs while waiting to get a medical job i just passed my exam once and i started getting good jobs so when that burden was in my heart i asked the lord what is it then i was just turning 40 um and the lord says that is you know we mentioned something about comfort zone that yes. how can i leave this comfort mm -hmm. and the lord pointed out to me that he's not interested in my comfort he's interested in my wow. character mm -hmm. and i looked at the bible and i saw that when god asks anyone to do something he's not usually interested in their character it's all about obedience which is a solid pillar of character because an obedient servant, obedient and faithful servant, is a strong character to have, being a strong and obedient person. So obedience to the unctions of the spirit that as you come back to Nigeria. At that point in time, the vision wasn't as clear as this, which is typical, again, of how God sends you a job. Like when he sent Jonah to Nineveh. Nineveh was, you know, a destination but what was he going to do there he didn't no, quite understand didn't. it you know but he didn't want to go so just like jonah too i didn't want to come but just like jonah who found himself in the belly of a whale and ended up in Italy, i found myself yeah. in nigeria too so looking back i thank god that god chose me gave me an assignment and i thank god for his grace on my life to be able to walk through those shadows of the value of death. Of death. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> because it, it was scary. It was a scary moment for me to I'm, I'm, I'm scary listening to you right now. I'm scared Thank listening you. to you. It's scary Thank for you. me listening to you. And and for all those who know what I went through, I can only say praise God. Because I lost everything. More or less lost everything that I believed was the epitome of success. 
they were mm. taken away from me. But God spared my life. Mm. The Lord spared my intellect. And when I realized that that was God saying, what next? The move is yours. That's when in obedience, yes. in humility, I said, God, I accept. And I've never regretted it. First Peter 5.10 is a scripture I use a lot to, to encourage others who probably God had to take things from them, to focus yes. them, to make them focus. First Peter 5.10 said, after a short while of suffering, the Lord God shall replenish, shall yes. restore, shall reestablish. Amen, amen. And I'm happy you looked at my wife. You said she's pretty. Yes, she is. She is. She's my, she's my wife now. <laughs> I lost a wife before in oh, this dear. journey. Oh, dear. You saw my son. He says my cover copy. I've lost a family before. <laughs> at that moment, when that transition was going on, he was like, this is a crazy person. Why will mm. he do this? Why will he sacrifice that? Nobody could understand that burden that was on my heart. And now on a day like this and an evening like this, when you're asking me, what is the motivation? Why would I want to do that? I tell you, it's the grace of God. Because right now, people celebrate me. I've received awards all over the world saying this is something you have done. John, but yes. really, truly, it is God who has given me the grace to do it. And I give him the glory for that. Thank yes. you. To God be the glory. To God, your 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 story is 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 inspiring. I'm telling you, if this is what anybody needs to listen to this night, because right now, doctor, all over the world, just in Nigeria, all over the world, people's spirits are down. People are, are heartbroken. People, there's so much downcast everywhere. And these are the words. These are the stories. These are the testimonials that need to people need to hear to be motivated, to be encouraged. That like the word you use, you know, God does not, ah, that, that's, that's a big word. God is not interested in your comfort or in your character. Oh, Jesus. That, that's deep. That's, that's, that's deep. That's deep. So maybe a, a lot of us will be able to understand why we are going through what we are going through when we can hear those words ring in our, in our ears that God is more about our reformed person our reformed life, our character, not just for us to be happy or be comfortable. I, I, I'm so glad. Let's not, let's not, let's not, let's not talk about the loss <laughs> anymore because God has replaced, like you said, he has replenished them, like you said in First Peter 5, he has replenished them, he has restored them beyond your expectations. All Amen. over the world, you have Amen. awards, recognition, yeah. and, and yeah. I'm sure if you knew this, you wouldn't have felt pain in the, in the beginning if you had yeah. seen them. But that's that's yeah. where God is bigger yeah, than all. Yes, he yes, yes. Only yes. In parts. He doesn't show us the full picture. I'm, I'm so happy for you, sir. I'm so glad to hear that at the end of it all, to him alone, we give all the glory. All the glory. That's, that's amazing. amazing. Thank you for sharing that very deep part with us. That's a Thank very you. sensitive story. Thank you for sharing that. I'm so grateful and honored to hear that directly from you. Thank you, Thank sir. You. Thank, you. Thank you. So share share with us. So when you when 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 you had this tran you know this transition and you know like you I like the word you shared that you know you had the word that kept you going and those words sustained you and now look at where God has kept you in this in, right in where you now came to Nigeria now you had the journey to now start facing a particular side of life you are now managing business and medicine. That's hard because medicine itself, every day you guys have discoveries. I, I see doctors like small gods because the knowledge that God puts into you people is very unique and it, the life of any human is in your hands. So, so you, you know, it takes you a lot of effort to be careful and to be very sensitive to handling people's issues. So now you're not combining it with business that can be so frustrating <clears throat> and, you know, very challenging. How do you manage both? Turning your business, your passion, your love into being, you know, lucrative and impactful as well. Yes, thank you, uh, Madam Adironke. You see, when God is sending you on an errand, he, he equips you. He yes. gives you special skills, special talents. When David faced Goliath, he was a very good boy with slingshots. <laughs> he knew how to fire that thing. 
So he had that extra skill, apart from his other good qualities. And so when God said, this body was on my heart to go and come back to Nigeria, I knew there were some skill set I had. I knew I wasn't cut out to do some things that my general training as a doctor has, has given me the opportunity to do. So to develop those skills, to develop those strengths, because I was in England, I figured the best way to do that is to have a bigger understanding. One of the failures of decent healthcare is because those who manage the money for healthcare delivery are not doctors. Mm. And those doctors who understand how to deliver healthcare are not businessmen. Business people. So when budgets are being made, when decisions are being made concerning healthcare, doctors are not there because we are busy operating, busy in clinics. And then we start complaining when the budgets are made for us. Approved. Mm. Approved. And then we, we just, and then we, like you mentioned earlier, we start talking down to people or talking above the heads of people. And at the end of the day, we don't achieve much. So I recognize that problem as a doctor back then, which was why I went back to school to get an MBA, a master's in business administration, to achieve two things to open up my knowledge base about what it is about money and business and management. And the second and the most important thing is so that I can be self-sustained. Because nobody wants to listen to somebody who is poor. Mm, sure. Our sure. <laughs> Yoruba sure. who say, <laughs> So you have to be, you have to have an understanding of wealth and creating wealth. And I figured that well, I have a skill as a doctor. Let me create wealth doing that while I am changing and creating impact at the same time. Because it is when I do that successfully that people will listen to me. So last month, a bank like Access Bank listened to me. Last year. A church like the Redeemed Christian Church of God, listen to me. <laughs> Few years ago, several first ladies, wives of governors, listen to me. I can go on and on no. and on like that. And the reason why they will listen is because somebody is standing in front of them, not just talking about, I want to make money, or talking about, I want to solve problems. He's talking, actually, I am solving this problem. I am making money doing it. But please join me. That's a better argument than yes. you going hand in hand. Hey, Joe. Hey, Joe. Sooner or later, people say, carry your wala. We too, we have wala. So I had to learn the business side of successfully doing what I am doing so that others feel comfortable to say, Dr. Lale or Optimal Cancer Foundation, how can we be part of what you are doing? Because as you know, everybody loves a successful story, story. So that's sure. how i have been able to combine the business side of what i'm doing because it is giving me an opportunity to continually impact and at the same time i can afford to change my cars yeah i can live in a very good house i can send my children to to good schools so i am not a poor doctor which mm -hmm. is very important to the glory of god that he has called mm -hmm. us into perfection yes <laughs> Yes. So you cannot be saying you are doing God's work and you are not. Exactly. So that answers and the after, question. After, after a while, if you are doing God's work and you are suffering, when you start maybe making a little, they will say it's from the, from the God's work <laughs> money. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You and, so and again, you are very like right. Empowered. People, people yeah, cast, let them know that. People, yeah, people cast expression on your motive. For God's sake. True. I have been offering free screening. I'm the only doctor that has been offering free screening. Yes, that's I know. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, sir. So yeah. if somebody is offering free screening for such a long period time. of time, and he's not asking you for one million, two million to continue doing it, you feel encouraged that True. this person True. is not looking for your money. And I think that yeah. understanding came from learning the business side of doing things. So that the strategy I would apply is different from others who had come before me, who mm. generally means well when they run their NGOs, 
but you need money to run the NGO. But in our own case, we run it as a sustainable NGO. That yeah. on a good day, we run it side by side with those who are paying for their services. And for those who can't afford to pay for it, they will come on a special day and they will get their discount. And everybody is being impacted and to the glory. And, and like I and like 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 they say in a good business, good business, every party should be happy at the end Absolutely. of the transaction. I like Absolutely. I like the way you do it, and everybody is happy. <laughs> Absolutely. Awesome. Absolutely. Well done, sir. Well done. That's that's Thank fantastic you. to me. That's fantastic. Thank you. Well done, sir. So and this journey has been because you you, you said it when when the the environment they didn't even know much about cancer. Absolutely, you know? because that was that was the need. That was the need. Because when I was, you said I spent 10 years in England. So at the end of my 10th, 9th to 10th year, a study was published called the Global Cancer Study. You can write it down and Google it later. Global Can. Global Cancer Study. Global Can. It was published in 2008 and a review was done in 2010. It showed that in countries where they are doing cancer screening, where they know a lot about cancer screening and they are raising awareness about it the incidence and the mortality from cancer is way low in third world countries like our own that we are mopping it under the carpet we are saying it is not our portion we are not doing what is expected from a public health point of view from an awareness point of view from an early detection point of view from prevention through screening and vaccination point of view people are dying and the incidence is very high. So the need is there. So when I came and the Lord said, this is where you're going to do your work. And I came back and I finally calmed down and I realized that this, this is not a fantastic, glamorous work. I thank God that I started from the base. I started my first clinic in Mafuluku in Oshoji. Mm. And, I, and it was from there the Lord promoted me to Surulere, to other parts of Nigeria. And the rest, as they say, is history. So at that point in time, nobody knew that you could actually convince LV Nigerians, in quotes, LV, mm -hmm. to LV. go to a clinic, a cancer screening clinic, and get tested. Yes. Now, what my colleagues didn't see it as a business profile that would make them money. They didn't think you, you they thought you needed a big clinic with facility. big hospital with big facility with big machine in fact they thought you need all of that those indices of size and you don't mm. because my experience in england has showed me that if you can separate care from primary to secondary to tertiary then you you don't have to put everything in, in place. one system in place just run it as a primary system. Let others who are running a secondary or tertiary care to, to handle Take all care. of that. And like I mentioned, cancer screening is meant to be integrated into primary healthcare. So I focus on developing primary healthcare services. And by having that knowledge and that understanding and that focus, it became possible. And women, you are not stupid. Once somebody brings a message to you, in the clearest and the simplest form, the and you understand manner. it, and you understand it, then you tell somebody else. True. And True. a combination of God's grace, good support, of course, thank God for my, for my comfort and my character that was resilient in the face of so many challenges, the message finally percolated. So everybody now knows, oh, I need to go for screening to go to Optima. I need to go ask my doctor, where is the place I need to do my screening? And I thank God that, yes, it took a while to do that, but that usually is how God confirms what? his work. Because yes. there was a need, there was a yearning of Nigerian women. There was a cry from our mothers. There was a loud groan and moaning from our sisters that yes. this thing that is killing them, taking them away from us one by one in one. the middle of the night, we can do something about it. And therefore, I had to give up. I had to come back to Nigeria to do that thing. And to God be the glory. When women now come to my clinic and say, praise the Lord, or say, hallelujah, I've been cured, it is in mm. response to a prayer that God yeah. has answered, using, by his grace, using me. 
to fulfill oh, people. Awesome. Yes. Awesome. It's so beautiful to hear. So beautiful you. that you know Thank that you. even after the ceremony, I like that part. You say, they come to us and they say, Praise the Lord, I've been healed. Yes. I'm sure. How do you feel when you hear? That's why I'm still saying that. It just confirms God's work. Because if people come to my clinic and they don't utter such testimonial, I still received one today. A doctor, a doctor. Yes, she came all the way from River State to do a follow up checkup today. I met her in 2017. A friend of hers sent her to me. And we discovered just this much she would have ended up with cervical cancer. So I, we treated her, she's fine. So today being 2020 December, she came for a follow-up. She came all the way from River State. Said nobody else would do a follow-up for her. That it is where God saved her from a diagnosis she of cervical cancer. She came back to and she came, she said the same word. I thank God for your life, Dr. Lale. And when I hear that, thank you. It makes it worthwhile to be obedient yeah. to God's calling. Because 10 years ago, it was like a crazy lunatic. Of course, Noah was like a crazy lunatic when he was building the hack. <laughs> Our Lord Jesus Christ was a crazy person when he was carrying the cross onto Calvary, mm -hmm. when they were whipping him, and they were saying, "Why don't you just tell everybody that uh, you didn't do this thing?" Said, "No, it is God's will that must be done." And that mm -hmm. is the encouragement I want to pass on to our our people there, our audience, our everybody, anybody all over out there. You see, things are not running the way it should be. Mm. Ever since the Lord created the world in perfection, things are not running the way the Lord God wants it. But in moments like when they are not running well, God always finds his own children and he uses them to solve those problems. Because mm. God does not open like a clash of thunder anymore. He doesn't do miracles like that anymore. Mm. A pillar of night a pillar of cloud, a pillar of fire at night, leading the children of Israel through wilderness. He doesn't do that anymore. He uses children of God who are obedient to find solutions. Yes. Yeah. And if God says there's a solution in your heart, don't expect it to be comfortable. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Just look on to him to sustain your character. And at the end of the day, you have testimonials. I thank God again yeah. that he's given me this opportunity to be of impact and of relevance to my generation. Now, let's talk the science behind what I am doing, if you don't mind. No, please, that's why you're here. Please go ahead, sir. go ahead. Every woman, every woman is at risk of having cervical cancer. Every woman. Every woman that is sexually active. Because the virus that causes cancer of the cervix is called HPV, human papilloma virus. This virus, resides naturally on the body of men. So when we have sexual intercourse with women, we pass that virus to our women. And that virus develops over time to lead to cancer. And these women are totally ignorant about it. They keep taking care of their children, they are taking care of their family, but something is growing within them unbeknownst to them. When they are in their late 40s, early 50s, that's when they start coming down with this disease. And by that time, it's too late. And that's why in developed countries, when they recognize that women form the bedrock of society, they invest heavily in these cancer screening modules, or agencies, screening programs for their women, and even vaccines available for their daughters, so that the women continue to live and live long. But we don't do that here. Why? Because we don't appreciate our women? Or is it because we don't know? Or because we don't have knowledge? Or because we don't have the money? The answer is not true. Yes. Those, those, those excuses are not true. We love our women. We have the money. Question is, do we have the right people? At the decision-making place.
Okay, I think we, okay, doctor is trying to reconnect back and he has been giving us some very vital information regarding cancer. Very, very vital information regarding cancer. And I think we need to listen and to do the needful as well. We need to listen and do the needful. You know, he, he's just sharing with us right now that um, the cost, the virus that causes cancer is taken from men into, you know, into the bodies of women, especially for women that are sexually active. So if you are, if you, if you, you know, if you know you are married or you're sexually active, you need, you might need to go to Optimal Healthcare Foundation at Surulere, which is the one that most people know at Surulere Bode Thomas. Yes, they have other locations, even in other parts of Nigeria. But the ones that is the one that I know that is easy is centralized is at Surulere Bode Thomas, and I'm sure Dr. Olalele is very easy to approach. Like I just spoke to him, invited him to the show. He didn't think, he didn't tell me to call back in four weeks or five weeks, you know. He just gave his consent when he got home. He just told me, okay, fine, I have a date already free. You can book me in. And that is the way you'll be attended to. So don't don't think of it like maybe there'll be a queue of people you waiting to be attended to or something. Optimal Health Care Foundation. You can hear him speak. You can see the passion in his voice. He's someone that loves people. He loves people. He have seen. He have, he, have, he, have, he has been through life, so he's been there. He's been there, and he understands the challenge and the pain of losing a dear one. And he wouldn't want the same for anybody. And to God be the glory. They've had great testimonies, great testimonies, you know, of God, what God is doing through them. Him, his other doctors and staff, all putting their, you know, their mental capacity, their efforts together, and trying to heal women and you know support women medically and the testimonials he said they received just one today and that's beautiful and that's where the focus should be and also also want to use this time to employ our government those in decision making you know places to see how they can support uh -huh. like dr uh, welcome back sir welcome back I was just trying to reiterate all the things that you've mentioned regarding cancer support, the way it is done in the Western world, how our government agencies here, yeah, decision makers, can put enough fund and support. Even if the fund is not enough, the support is the most important. You know, there are corporate organizations. You just mentioned Access Bank, you know, one of your big uh, supporting um, corporate organizations. There are corporate organizations that, that would definitely want to support, multinationals that will want, you know, this this um this ENS terminal disease to stop to end you know and you, like you said it's the first solution is early detection early detection will stop you know the you know the death rate and all that especially for women above 40 within 40 and 50. please sir share with us you are trying to explain you know the other areas of where they can come in sorry i lost you temporarily so I apologize yes, about yes. that. No, it's fine, sir. Um, it's fine. But could you thank you? So could you ask that question again, please? Okay, so you know you were telling us the causes of cancer, where the virus comes from, okay. you know, and the okay. women yeah. are easy challenging from 40 to 50. And the things early screening is the first solution, you know, to search and where the support you said um, you know, there is primary, there's um secondary, and there's tertiary you know, health centers yeah. for this, yeah, exactly. So in the Western world, they, they invest so much into it. I'm not saying now that, now that we know the cost, now that we know the area of, you know, where the issue is, how do we gather enough support, awareness, you mentioned awareness, you know, publicity. Now the decision makers, how can they come in to make this push? We still need more, more need to be done. So your own, okay. your own. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, the audio was echoing, so that's why I had to wait okay. for that. To yes, away. your. I think your network from your end was there was interference or something. Okay, uh, I hope it's okay now. No, it's fine. It's fine now. Okay, so in solving the problem of cancer increase incidence of cancer, particularly cervical cancer, three things need to happen. The awareness has to be there. So for example, a woman needs to know that she's already infected with a virus that can cause cancer in her body through lovemaking with her husband. 
She doesn't have to be prosmicus. Mm. She doesn't have to be, she doesn't have to have multiple sexual partners, just one sexual partner. So a woman needs to know that. Yeah. Second thing is a woman now needs to know that she needs to go somewhere to get screened. And then if there's a sign that there's a problem, get treated. And a woman needs to know that there's vaccine available. So that knowledge base, that awareness can only be done sustainably government. Because mm -hmm. as you know, awareness on social media, electronic media, print media, radio, television costs money. Yes, yes. So if we do awareness like NGOs, we do awareness in breast cancer maybe once a month, which is October, January for cervical cancer. People, they, so by the time you finish one awareness campaign, people are forgotten. It's a long so to time. Keep on the sustained awareness. It is government that can do that. So NGO, what we have done is to look for opportunities to partner with consumer product uh, commercial comp uh, commercial companies or uh, corporate organizations that have consumer products that people use a lot, where women use a lot, to help us raise awareness to women and over time i have we have been successful in doing that for my foundation what we have done is to create an ongoing awareness so it doesn't matter whether it's january february march april or whenever every day is an awareness day for us at the foundation using existing platforms like social media yes to do that however when you have screened people for example we are in lagos they need to be able to know where to go for the next appointment. Mm -hmm. So yes. somebody has invited me to Abekota to go and do screening of 100 women. I'll go. But in two years' time, if I'm not back there to follow up on those women's screening, they have been stranded. So again, that's where government is important. We have 774 local governments in Nigeria. Each local government has a primary health care center. There's no reason why we cannot domicile cancer screening service in every local government in Nigeria. Not necessarily that government will do it, but government needs to lead on this. And government doesn't have to spend a lot of money because it's already in their budget. They already have doctors. They already have nurses in these health centers. They just need to continually raise awareness to women to go there for their screening. And of course, partner with organizations like ours to do training, to do quality assurance, and more importantly, get the members of the public to be interested in doing what is needed when they are due for their screening. And last but not the least, if women, excuse me, are saved from an untimely death from cervical cancer or breast cancer, to train their children. I've just told you how my mother contributed to the success of my life. Imagine if my yes, mother had died in her 30s from cervical cancer. I'd yeah. probably be tagging my pants all over the place right now, putting maybe two pieces of earrings on my hair and I'm not even but I live into a womb. That's how important women are. That's important, how important mothers are. And I'm sure everyone listening out there can relate to how important the role their mothers played in the Play. success of their lives up to this point. We lose our mothers. The, the return, the social returns, the benefits, how to waste whatever investment. That's why developed countries are called developed countries, because they've developed mm. the lives of their women. The index of development is actually linked to development of women. Women. And here in Africa, on third world countries, we, we humor ourselves and call ourselves developing countries. That means we are still developing our women. God will answer our prayer, my sister. So Amen. in a nutshell, what do we need to do? <laughs> what do we need to do? We just need to keep raising awareness. And God bless you for using this platform to raise awareness. Any woman out there who has had sex before, has never gone for cancer screening, is playing with HPV. Any young girl out there who has ever taken vaccines to prevent herself from the HPV is playing with fire. And women need to know that they need to go to a place. While we are waiting for government to develop cancer screening, every local government, they can still come to Optimal Cancer Care Foundation. 
As Lord will yeah. have it, I have only one center at the moment in Surulere, but I want to do more. But I can't do it on my Yes. Oh, doctor, <laughs> network wants to want to stop our shine, but it's not possible, like we say, it's not possible. So much already being shared, so much already. Like doctor has been saying, you know, it's something that we you can you can hear his passion, you can hear from his voice that women are the bedrock of any nation. You can you can choose to, to you know to be different about it, but it's the fact. It's the fact that has been tested. And it's confirmed that women are the bedrock of any nation. And if you want to sustain the future of a nation, even through the young ones, you must go through their women. You know, you must be able to sustain and support the women in every aspect, empowerment, medical, you know, respect, value, honor. And that's why it's so critical. It's not a gender fight. No, it's not a gender issue. It shouldn't even be an issue. It's the fact that, a woman sustains the growth of any nation. A woman is the one that has the blessing to birth a, a generation, a child. So as long as, as the woman has the blessing to birth, the woman deserves all, all support, all, all the way. So it's not a gender issue right now. It's not about trying to favor one gender. No, it's about doing the needful and the right thing to sustain the growth of any nation the focus should be on the women because through the women, even the younger ones, the young generation will have it better for themselves. Thank you, doctor. Thank you. Thank you so much. I wanted to ask doctor. Doctor, can you hear me? I was going to ask doctor about um, the, 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 this vaccine they take at nine years old for young girls. I don't know if how, how valid it is and all that. Maybe when, when it comes online again, I'm sure his network is trading from his end mine too but i'm sure he'll be back soon so we let's just keep saying at the awareness the little we can do for us that know about it please encourage people encourage friends and families encourage you know your girlfriends your your female friends all over please encourage them to go to optima healthcare foundation at Suleri. you know that's where they can even get a discounted very extreme discount you know why we still keep pushing our government, demanding them to be responsible to their duties, you know, by making um, the, the screening facility available in every healthcare center. Nigeria is overgrown for this. They are overgrown for it. It's not a thing that we should even be begging yeah. for. It's what we should demand. Yeah. We are way over for it. And we deserve to have the screening center at every local government. But while we keep, you know, pushing for that, let's do the needful go to Optima Healthcare Foundation at Body Thomas, Surulere, and get tested, get screened. It's Op very, very Optima important. Cancer Care Foundation. Cancer Optima Cancer Foundation, Care yeah. Foundation, yes. Yeah. Thank so you I was very going much. To ask you, this vaccine, because there was a movie I watched, amazing movie, amazing movie by um the, by a foundation. I think Lear yeah, Foundation. Lear Foundation, Lear Foundation, Lear Foundation. Yeah. Fantastic movie, you know, this and they person, show that, yeah. yeah, and they show that it, it, there is no class to cancer it can affect anybody whether yeah. from the poor or from the rich it can affect yeah. anybody and there was a mention about vaccine for nine-year-old girls can you talk about that yeah. sir oh yes i also mentioned it earlier that uh, is one of the fake focal points of women knowing that they need to take vaccine so because we now know the virus that has been linked to cervical cancer is sexually transmitted we figured out that every young girl is going to today is going to be a young woman tomorrow and she's going to be sexually active at some point if she's going to be reproductively uh, uh, engaged so what do we do we should vaccinate them the way we vaccinate babies against bcg polio, polio babies, and all that yes. yeah we should vaccinate every young girl and this has been going on in developed countries again developed because they recognize the importance of protecting young girls before they become sexually active. And this viral, this vaccine has been around for 11 years now. They've done a 10 wow. year study to show the efficacy, how effective it is. And it has been proven that it, indeed, it reduces the incidence and impact of HPV in causing cervical cancer. We've been, given this vaccine, we've been given this vaccine at my foundation for the past eight years too. Oh, and it's still an expensive vaccine. It's a vaccine that costs almost 15,000 naira per dose. That's it's still and expensive. Are, yes, and it costs the, the women, a woman needs to take three doses 
one now, next month, and six months' time. Those three doses okay. will give immunity for life. Total immunity. For life. For life. So if one woman has completed this vaccine, she doesn't need to worry about HPV infection that can lead to cancer. If the woman had been sexually active before caught, taking the vaccine, then she needs to continue to doing a checkup. She needs to continue doing the checkup for at least another 10 to 15 years afterwards. But for a young girl who's never been sexually active when she started the vaccine, then she can be rest assured that once she becomes sexually active, the vaccine will protect her from this virus that can cause this deadly cancer. And, and for your foundation, foundation to have my, this vaccine, the the um the cost the cost was it well what, how did you get to arrive at that cost is there any <clears> government <throat> influence on it or it was just direct you went to source for it the company that manufactures these vaccines and imports them to nigeria is gsk and gsk obviously imports this vaccine to nigeria with foreign exchange so each time there's a fluctuation in the foreign exchange okay. i mean when we started when we started this vaccine, it was seven six thousand five, but with mm. increased foreign exchange rates against the dollar, uh, the dollar. rates to have to be adjusted. So that's why we are where we are now. So to make it easy for some of our women, what I do is to say, you take your vaccine, but when you are bringing your daughter, you pay a discount, or on Children's Day annually for the past seven years. Every children's day, my children, that's my patient's children, they pay half the price. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yes. And that has been well subscribed to. So Thank my you. patients know Thank that you. every year they bring their own daughters for their vaccine. When, when and around, what time of the year? What time of the year do you always May 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 twenty seven children's day. There's, there's an half children's price, day. half price to pay for girls from nine years old. Any girl that 16. has not been fully from active, nine to take 16. The from nine to sixteen. Nine to from sixteen, 16. fantastic. Please, let me show that door, please. How nine about how about if they are eighteen and they are not active yet, and they still take oh, it? Oh yes, they pay. They pay. They pay the full rates. Oh, okay, okay. Rates. Now, okay, the, okay, the, the benefit the, for those nine to sixteen. Nine to sixteen. I hope we are all listening. Please, there's another May twenty-seven coming up next year. Get your daughters, your teenage girls, nine to sixteen, half the price. So even if it's going to be hundred k by then, doctor will cut <laughs> it down half, half the price. He has given his word. By the, by the grace of God, we trust him for that. And so, do you mean now that those vaccines are not in any primary health center, any government hospital? Oh dear. Very recently, very recently, some teaching hospitals are now stocking it but not in primary health care center because there's no plan for government to give these vaccines to our children. Wow. Wow. There's no. This is disheartening. It's sad to hear it this. In other, in other parts of the world, in other parts of the world, they give it to them in school. In school? Yeah, they go to their schools and vaccinate them because every child has to be in school. So if, you're, if your child is in school, your child will be vaccinated free. So you can but see what, why we are still called developing countries. But, but, but I hope I hope the medical body is pushing for it. The Nigerian medical it is. Med it is. please they should they should please push for it. You know we we push for everything to get everything in this nation. So we should let's, let they should not get um, they should not relent. Please please it's really disheartening to hear this. It's very disheartening to hear this because if if um, if if it's going to be hard for a, a an average Nigerian to pay this, how much more? low-income families people that have next to nothing are they going to pay for this vaccine which yeah. is very critical to to yeah. the to the elderly living of young girls thank you so much doctor for yeah. all that you're doing so, so great that's the information we have there and thank you thank you thank you and thank so, you for having doctor, me sure. thank you for the wonderful work yeah. you're doing no thank you so much so before you go doctor share with us um, you've given us the precautions what we may need to do your place is open optima cancer care foundation is open to them to get checked at body thomas you know you've told us where the virus comes from and what can be done and even for the early detection for nine years to 16 years they have half to pay half and if you have you are blessed you can pay the full amount please 
take your daughters to optimal and get them screened and vaccinated it's very very key and also of course so tell us doctor in all of this where do the men come to play in all of this in all yes. of this now where do the men because i i i, I say it all the time my own gender equality is about everybody complementing each other it's not about we are fighting who is better or who knows how to do no it's not about it it's about the fact that you have a role to play as your as your gender i have a role to play and how do we make both roles you know impactful for the whole for ourselves and of course for the whole world at large and of course to give god the to fulfill purpose which is to give god the glory so where do the men need to play the men that listen, what should they do to their wives? How do they push the, their women? You know, I hope it's not a blame game situation. Please share with us. Yeah, yeah, email. I generally believe that women need to be the ones to be reached with this message. What the best thing men can do well, is to position well, their well, women. Men. is to position their women to be able to go for screening, get vaccinated, and more importantly, provide the funding for them. Because men usually are the ones who hold the funds, who are the breadwinners in most families. And the other thing to do is just prioritize the funding that, ah, I want my daughter to be vaccinated. Oh, I want my wife to go for a test. So men can play that wonderful role in in getting uh women to know one where to go to provide the funds for them and when to go so uh men also are very wonderful in the sense that in in this work that we're doing because they are the ones that share the virus amongst their sexual partners so by limiting sexual uh, uh what i'll call inordinate uh uh illicit sexual uh affairs uh we can reduce uh the incidence of uh of hpv in fact hpv is the commonest sexually transmitted virus in the world and is that likely to do to the uh social cultural lifestyle of most people who engage in uh either extramarital or premarital sex uh in communities where these things are not uh, not common we see low incidence of hpv and in faith-based organizations, there are times when we go to a group of women who are probably widows in a faith-based organization, we see a very low incidence of HPV infection compared to when we go to maybe a university where we see a lot of young girls who are engaged in, in such activities. So it's something to do with, uh, with sex, certainly it's something to do with social, uh, uh, cultural, uh, lifestyle changes that women are exposed to in, in this part of the world. Another thing men need to worry about and this is key. Men are usually in position of policy making. They're usually the ones that are making the rules and the laws. They need to start creating policies and laws to protect our women from this deadly disease, particularly in this part of the world. So if, for example, enough senators, enough House of Assembly parliamentary members know about creating an institution, an agency, a government parastatal, that focuses basically on preventing cervical and breast cancer in women. We'll go a long way in solving this problem. And, and I want to believe that there's a time, a time will come when a right leader, the right person with the knowledge base will be in a position of leadership uh, to, to make this happen for the benefit of our women, to the benefit of humanity, and to the glory of God. I hope uh, Sister uh, uh, Sister Adiroke is still there. I think I've lost her. So in the event that women, uh, in the event that women are watching this program and they want to um, contact us, uh, we are available at uh, 118 Body Thomas in Surulere, Optimal Cancer Care Foundation. And if you want to follow me or ask, ask any question, uh, I am Dr. Olufemi Olaleye. You can go to my page on Facebook 
Dr. Dr. Olufemi Olaleye. Uh, that's my page on Facebook. Uh, you can send me a message there. You can come to my social media uh, page on Instagram as Dr. Femi, Dr. Femi. Um, and you can do the same thing on Twitter to Dr. Femi as well, Dr. Femi. Um, if you're comfortable to come to our clinic uh, on Bode Thomas, uh, it costs just 5,000 naira to get screened Mondays to Saturdays, but on Fridays, we offer a 50% discount. Uh, a 50% discount that allows you to pay just 2,500 for your screening. I would believe that if you do this, you can share your, 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 your experience with other women, and you can oh welcome back thank you sir <laughs> can share your experience <laughs> yes, with the women and uh, thank you for having me thank you thank you so okay, much thank you for me. having me I, I like the fact that you continued thank you i've been i've been struggling with three networks trying to shift from one network to the other but it's, it's all fine it's part of the challenges on of online interviews and i'm so grateful that you kept you know you kept it going you were talking about it and i'm sure that a lot of people have gotten the information they need. Please, everyone, Dr. Binier, is, it would have cost us big money to have him on the show. But is that selfless to have come on the show to share this vital information with all with everyone? So please, yeah. let's do the needful and let's take our life in our hands through the grace of God, especially with this kind of opportunity that we have with Dr. Lale and his team of, you know, of, of, of staff and doctors. Please, everyone. Always, always try to look for a way to make you know life more comfortable for ourselves. Thank you so much, doctor. Doctor, thank you so much. I can never thank you enough. I don't know how to thank you. I'm just grateful that you know I you thank know you. I got your information through a dear friend. I always share with my circle of friends that if you know anyone that is doing so well, and I had I had on my agenda medical doctors, I had your name, but I didn't know how to reach you. You know, and a friend of mine just said that, ah, don't you know Dr. Lale? That is very approachable. I said, ah, I don't know. I'm not sure that doctors are very difficult to pin down. They are always so busy, always, always busy. He said, no, not this one. This one knows what he's doing and he will have time, you know, to share Alpha he has come and Alpha is where he's going with everyone. And I'm so grateful that she, just as she said, that was the way I met you, you know, that you didn't have to give me <laughs> appointment, online appointment, <laughs> interview appointment. Thank you so much. So I'm so grateful, and to all your staff you. that is supporting you in this journey. God bless every one of them, Amen. and to your family Amen. too as well. Because I know your job takes you out of home many times. So mm -hmm. how do you? How do you? How do you? How, how, how can I say? How do you pay back when the job takes you out of the house for a long time? The the, the line is crackling. I can hardly hear you properly. Well, I give God the glory. Can you hear me now? Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. I about said, how my do you family. compensate the family when you travel for a long time, when the job takes you out? Yes, we, we use social media, we use WhatsApp video, we do all the usual things that you do to bring the family connected together. Um, mm -hmm. I try as much as possible to travel a lot out of the home, but uh, yes, that, that is something we've had to deal with. And uh, But it's all good. I have a very strong woman as my wife who is yes. happy to run the house yes well i'm not around and she she knows exactly uh uh uh, uh, uh what i would call a sweetheart my my that this mm -hmm. is my vision uh she knows yes. this is what i love to do and therefore she's mm -hmm. my helpmate in making sure that whatever it is i do i have great support and i have my my team to thank thank you for bringing that up i have very good dedicated team um one of them is the one saying thank you doctor Jummy, oh, uh, okay, Jummy. Okay, yes. that's me. Ask ah, for your name, like Jummy. Ah, Jummy, yeah. what you say? <laughs> Jummy, Maybe that's Jummy. our Facebook. Maybe that's our Facebook name. She's one of our staff. God bless uh, you, Jummy. Yes. God bless you. <laughs> and uh, we have so many other uh, who are probably watching right now, and I thank God for their dedication. I thank you for uh, for 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 bringing us uh, on your program. Madam Abi Bataino, thank you very much for, for the positive comments. Uh, Mrs. Abi Bat, thank well. you. We'll see you. Thank you, Mrs. Abi Bat. Okay. Thank you. God bless you. To everyone thank that you. has been talking, so, we say God bless you. Please, our love to mommy as well. We send our we'll regards. We pray that God will thank continue you. to 
sustainer in sound health and in sound mind as well. You know, thank and we we'll say thank you to Madam for you know allowing you to have an hour, you know, in the house. Can you imagine when you thank you, you. Thank you. <laughs> and to the little champs as well. It's all, it's all good. It's all good. It's all thank good. you, Doctor. Thank you. Very thank you. Much. I'm so grateful. God bless and you. Well done. Well thank done. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Right. And I can see right. that. I can see. And um, but my friend, let me just give her, the person that gave me your contact. I um, her name is Yetunde Ismail. Yetunde Ismail Adijat. Adijat is her name. I'm sure you might not remember because you have a lot of people that you meet every day. So massive thank you to Yetunde. You. Thank you. Okay, again. let me let you go, doctor. Let me let you go. Thank you, doctor. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I can't hear you. Okay, sir. The fine doctor, doctor is fine. I always can I excuse you now. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much for staying, you know, connected with us. Thank you. God bless every one of you. Jamiloju, Madam Abibat, all the staff of you know Optimal Cancer Care Foundation. Thank you, each and every one of you, for supporting this dream and for staying in, you know, in the vision with Dr. Olaleye. We are extremely grateful. And to the family of Olale, I will say thank you, ma'am. Thank you to the children and to grandma, you know, that has inspired Olufemi Olale. We we'll say God bless you, grandma. May the Lord continue to keep you in sound health and sound mind. And we use this medium to employ every woman out there. If you have young girls between 9 and 16, please take them to Optimal Cancer Care Foundation, Bode Thomas, Surulere, if you're in Lagos. Uh, if by any chance you're opportunity to be in Lagos, please take them there. There's a vaccination they must take for three, you know, three um, three vaccinations in stages. And with that, they are cancer free for life. For life, they are cancer free. And if you, if you, if you have to wait till May 27th, the Children's Day, where they is celebrated, they give 50% discount to everyone that is between nine and 16 years. And, you know, so please, this is a, big privilege and if you're a woman that is sexually active which is we, we say by our you know our standard of um of of the nation adulthood if you are married and you're sexually active or if you're a young girl please if you are maybe one or two you might not even have been by your cost so many things happen and so please try and get screened you can go to optimal care foundation the rates for the screening is free and it's discounted if you have to pay you know, for whatever stage you have to, you have to get to. So please, everyone out there, we're employing you, get screened. It's very, very critical. And we also want to use this medium to employ our government. Please, we have, asked, we have so many things we are asking of you, but some are so critical and so vital to human health and to our women. The women are the bedrock of any nation. They are the one that bring life. They are the fertility carrier. And they are the one that sustain the growth of any nation. And if you want to see on this nation grow beyond where it is right now, you need to invest in women. It is not about gender fights. We are not fighting. We are just saying what is the right thing to do. So please, government, those in decision making, uh, uh, our, our local government, our federal government, our state government, try and get involved. Let's seek the experts like Dr. Laleye on how to come on board and partner. And to the multinationals, to the companies that have been supporting, God bless you guys. May the Lord continue to increase, increase your business. Thank you so much for all the corporate world that has been supporting this course. God bless you. And to every woman going through this challenge right now, I pray that the healing hand of the Lord will come upon you. I pray that the Lord Jehovah will heal you, whatever the name of the sickness might be, whether it's cervical cancer, whether it's breast cancer, the hand of Jehovah is mighty to save. And I call on him that is above every other name to touch you wherever you are right now, all over the world. I call on the name Jesus to touch you and to heal you completely. To heal you, though, your next screening time, you shall be declared cancer free by the mercy and the hand of the Almighty God. Many women have testified, yours will be next in Jesus' name. God bless you for watching. The repeat is going to be on YouTube. You can watch Adirunke Onikwede on YouTube. Subscribe, like, and comment. God bless you guys. Have a fantastic weekend. Christmas is around the corner. Be happy. Don't let the devil steal your joy. Like we say on the show, the day you wake up to your dreams is your morning. Run with it. Anytime you wake up, regardless of your age or your status, is your morning. Have a fantastic with them. My love to your family. Stay connected to the source and God bless you. Bye, everyone. Bye.